The film The Matrix asks a host of philosophical questions, but one of its overriding ideas is Plato's allegory of the cave, and we'll explore this idea on this episode of The Sci-Fi Show. The 1990 film The Matrix by the Wachowskis is full of a host of interesting philosophical questions, but one of the overriding themes of the film is an interesting reversal of Plato's allegory of the cave. Plato was an ancient Greek philosopher, student of the founder of Western philosophy, Socrates, and he talked about the allegory of the cave in his manuscript The Republic. The allegory of the cave is a dialogue between Socrates and Glaucon, and seeks to illustrate for the reader the true nature of the world to make us see beyond the world that is in front of us. In the story, we are asked to picture a group of men who have been chained in a cave since infancy, and all they can see are flickering shadows of various objects being carried by other men in front of a fire, and the shadows of these objects are projected on the wall in front of them. The objects are statues and models of objects from the real world, straw and clay men, animals, trees, and other things. There are also sounds made by the people moving the objects, but the prisoners attribute these sounds to the shadows on the wall. Over time, the men will name and seek to understand the shadowy images on the wall in front of them. This is their reality. This is as close as they get to the real world. What the men see is not the real world, but this shadowy projection. I think you can see how this fits in with the Matrix films, with humans imprisoned in a virtual world by the machines, and they are not able to understand what is really going on as they go about their lives. Plato then asks us to imagine a man, chained from infancy and knowing no other life, is freed and able to explore his world from a new perspective. He's able to look directly at what would likely be the blinding light of the fire. He struggles to understand what he sees, struggles to make sense of the objects that have been cast in the shadows on the walls to understand the deeper reality behind the objects that have been creating what he took for the totality of reality. After some time of adjustment, the prisoner can exit the cave complex itself and move out into the real world, into the brilliant and again blinding light of day, to see the real world and see real animals and men and trees, things he had only previously known as flickering shadows on the wall. At this point, what does the man do? Plato suggests that if he goes back into the cave and tries to tell the other prisoners of all the wonders he has seen, what the true nature of the world is, then he'll be met with scorn and ridicule if he's lucky, and possibly violence. The other prisoners in the cave will assume his journey has addled the man's mind. He'll be babbling of things they have no experience of, things they can't even conceive of because they're so wildly out of their experience and the freed man will no longer even be all that good at identifying and understanding the shadows projected on the wall, because his eyesight is adjusted to this wider reality. He no longer is adjusted to the dim light of the cave, but the brilliant light of the sun. The men in the cave, even if offered their freedom, would, Plato concludes, probably not leave the cave, all they've ever known, because the experience of leaving the cave seems to have driven the other prisoner mad, with his talk of real objects and the sun and other wonders. Part of the purpose of the allegory of the cave is to illustrate Plato's big idea, his theory of the forms. The forms are the perfect representation of things that exist in some higher realm, that all our earthly things take their form and nature from. The forms are the really real, the highest and most basic nature of reality. Plato envisaged the forms existing in some sort of ethereal realm of ideas. Later philosophers, the Christian Platonists, envisage the forms as existing in the mind of God. The idea of the forms is an idea we'll have to return to in a later episode and explore more fully. How the allegory of the cave acts as the backdrop to the Matrix films, or at least the first one, strikes me as pretty interesting. At first glance, the analogy seems obvious. The denizens of the Matrix are the prisoners in the cave, and the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar and the inhabitants of Zion are the freed prisoners who have walked free of their shackles and seen the real world. But this is where it gets interesting. Unlike in Plato's allegory, those freed from the cave and able to wander in the world 
don't see a greater, more perfect, and more beautiful world, but one is so much worse and more horrible than their existence in the Matrix. Far from being a higher level of existence, this world is bleak, black, and destroyed, infested with killer robot squids, horrible bland food, and itchy, ill-fitting clothing. So what should we make of this version of the Allegory of the Cave? It seems like so many of the ideas contained in the Matrix to turn the usual understanding on its head. Given the choice between life in Zion and on the Nebuchadnezzar, I think I can understand why Cypher would choose the blissful ignorance of the Matrix over the harsh, bleak reality of life in the real world. In Plato's vision of the world, we have an eternal realm that contains the forms, and our understanding grows, and as we undertake the philosopher's task, we grow in understanding and appreciation of the forms. That as we look and understand the world, we find chinks and cracks in this world, a chance to see outside the cave and glimpse the real. To move beyond this mere shadow and move closer to the really real. To move outside of the cave, to go beyond the flickering images and shadows. To get beyond this world, to leave the cave. The world of the Matrix presents us with a decidedly different vision, a bleak and horrible one. The comfortable fantasy existence of the Matrix is so much better and easier than the real world. You might struggle to some degree, but nothing like the real world, and there's no giant robot squids trying to tear you limb from limb. There is truth in the real world, the truth about what the world is really like, not the illusion created by the machine overlords, but it's a dark and terrible truth. A truth of humankind locked in an endless war that can probably never be won. A world that awaits a messiah figure in Neo, but a world where leaving the cave doesn't lead to a bright outside world, a world with the sun. Something so much greater than the flickering firelight that illuminated the cave, but a blasted and barren world with less light, and few of the pleasures of the illusory world that has been left behind. In William Shakespeare's play Hamlet, he has the main character observe, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, Horatio. The answer that the world of the Matrix gives to this question is an interesting one because it asserts that the statement has it backwards. In truth, there are far fewer things than are dreamt of in the philosophy of Horatio, that reality is less diverse and wonderful than even in Horatio's reductionist philosophy. I think Plato would have recognized this retelling of his story of the cave, but would have been surprised that people could think that leaving the cave and experiencing the real world would be in a sense to move to a darker and even more cramped and unpleasant cave. Perhaps Plato's cave and the Wachowski's matrix represents the fundamental difference of point of view between the ancient and modern world. This does suggest an interesting paradox. The ancients had a more expansive and wondrous view of the world. They saw it as so much more than the mere appearance. And they lived in a time of disease, pain, suffering, and before the discovery of antibiotics and anesthetics. The modern world, though, has a world where... So many of these struggles and hardships are overcome, where strep throat isn't a possible death sentence but a minor inconvenience, where going to the dentist or needing surgery is certainly unpleasant but relatively pain-free. Yet we view the world as that of the Matrix, amazing material comfort and pleasure, but in reality there's nothing but a bleak and blasted landscape that we use the pleasures to distract us from. I'm not sure who's worse off, although in fairness, I do say this is a modern who has enjoyed much of the benefits of these pain reduction technologies and live in a society where obesity is regarded as a far more pressing problem than starvation. Which version of the allegory of the cave do you find best reflects reality? Which would you rather? You can find more information on the different ideas contained in this episode in the show notes on scifishow.com. I can be reached with comments via feedback at scifishow.com. You can leave a comment in the show notes at scifishow.com. And you can also leave comments on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash sci-fi show. You can also follow the show via The Sci-Fi Show on Twitter. If there's a topic you'd like me to look into, please don't hesitate to ask. And don't forget, it's fi with a ph. Sci-Fi Show is recorded under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 3.0 license, and the music is by Furious J and Maniacal M.
The Sci-Fi Show is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx. Learn how to podcast, theorize over the TV shows Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Time in Wonderland, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Under the Dome. Laugh with our clean comedy, interface Christianity with the world, learn critical thinking from movie reviews, and more at noodle.mx.